So we should be live on YouTube. I will look. And I should get a notice on YouTube. Yep, I'm getting a notice. Let me refresh this sucker. And are we getting audio on YouTube? I will yes, we are. Yay. I should get a notice on YouTube. Okay. And let's try Facebook. Bless you. Thank you. No. All right, I just, I just uh, closed the Facebook app on my iPad and then reopened it and searched for Cider again. And all I'm getting so far, whoops, they're not in chronological order. I do have today's. So here we go. Go live. Come on, go live. There we are. All right, and I'm using streaming software. The key should be the same. Streaming Facebook, okay. What's the video about? All right, so 2023, 08, 09, Apple, Cider, live meeting. As opposed to dead meeting, I guess. <laughs> I was telling dad jokes before I was a dad. Okay, streaming software and go live. Okay, and we should be live on Facebook now. Um, your volume on YouTube is very nice. Well, that's unusual. <laughs> Isn't it usually low? What, are you talking to me? Yeah. Isn't my volume usually low? All right, so our streaming is working. I just caught up with your I just I just caught up with your question and the answer is yes it usually is but right now today it's good. Also I was able to I was able to hear Ken or myself or somebody so that uh, audience people are in there. All right, I got to get the Okay, that's weird. Okay. So we should be seeing the Cider web page. And if I do this, it should switch to the stream page. Yeah, that works. So as we go forward, um, <clears throat> we're just going to have to go by people's voices to figure out who talked because the thing at the top won't help, right? Just says guest, yeah. It does put a blue border around the person's picture who is speaking. Yeah, but if you don't have all the tiles on one screen, that doesn't help either that much. Yeah. So we, we now have, let's see, one, two, only three webcams. That's why I only have three tiles on my screen. Oh, somebody new just came in. Let's see who that is. I don't see Shirley yet. Let me go check on her and see what the problem is.
Hi, Carol. Hello. How are you doing? <clears throat> Good. I was on my phone as well, but I couldn't get my name to come up. <laughs> no. Um, the way Steve set up tonight's meeting, apparently the step for putting in your name was skipped. Oh, so okay. We're all going to be called guests tonight, except right. for Steve, who's Chapel Cider. All right. Well, I think I will log off on my phone. I don't need to be on twice. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised it doesn't let you change your username even during the session. I'm having trouble even logging off on my phone. I don't know how to get it to go out. <laughs> oh well. Can't hear you, Shirley. Test, test, test. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Sorry. I said I had to reboot and it took forever. The only time I use this computer. Guest, every, everybody is a guest. That's right. This is Apple Users Anonymous tonight. <laughs> it's a feature. <laughs> I guess. You have to admit you have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> we don't admit yeah. it, there is no problem. Right. 
if you join us on the Mastermind Lounge, you will admit you have a problem. <laughs> uh, we got a guest question. Is that what that little red dot is? No. Yeah. The gentleman who just joined us, I, I apologize. I don't know your name. Um, you are muted. But not, not now. That's it. Yeah, and I, the, for some reason, the initial um, um, lounge link wasn't accepting my password, so I had to make a new link, which is why the one in the email didn't work, the first email. But I did uh, change it on the uh, website, so hopefully people will be able to find it there. Well, it's just one of those days. Things yeah. are just giving us, giving us a glitch, that's all. But it is a beautiful day out, so. If um, if everything went right, it would be surprising. <laughs> All right, so are we the only six, or are there other people? I can't tell. Somebody who is a guest just sent a message, so I don't know who that is. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a... Uh... The six guests Seven and me. Seven people, but one does not have a webcam on. All right. All right, we all know who everybody is pretty much, so I'll just say welcome to everybody. And this wonderful August day in 2023. Well, should I start or should we wait a little bit longer? What, what do we think this is as good as we get for now? Probably. It's 7.30 almost. Is that okay? All right. Well, like I said, welcome to everyone for our August, August 9th, 2023 meeting. And um, our topic tonight is going to be my iPhone can do what and it can do that and i looked up a bunch of stuff that i never knew that it could do so we can go through that steve do you want to start with news first or before we start presentation um Is there any news or yeah. apple news whatever we can see what's been in the apple news lately for baseball fans, Friday Night Baseball is going to be on uh, Apple TV+. Plus. Oh, we had our third quarter results. I'll get to uh, six colors graph in a minute. So how many people have, uh, have taken advantage of Apple's um, savings account that's available oh, now in, in Apple Card? Yet. There's $10 billion dollars they've gotten so far. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm using it to squirrel away money that my wife can't find so I can get a Vision Pro. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so a lot of a lot of it was uh, initially your your extra percentage that you earned back on Apple Card usually just went in your Apple Cash account and you ended up spending it. So it's kind of a neat, neat idea that they changed that so you can put it into an Apple Savings account. But I have uh, uh, read that Goldman Sachs is trying to get out of the deal and have some other bank tank it over. Not sure why. Discover. One of the things that was um, <coughs> approached was um, that Discover would take over, maybe, um, as the... Uh, vendor <laughs> for the Apple card, but who knows? Does that mean that if you have Discover that you would get points on your Discover? No, well, nothing's happened yet. So no, I know, but I'm just saying as if a, it did. No, no you, you if you have an Apple card, it's, still just, be, it's just for it's Apple, card. Apple stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, speculation that maybe Discover... Or maybe somebody else, you know, who knows? Maybe Visa, you know, in, there's a lot of companies that may want to 
take this over from um, Goldman Sachs. And, um, yeah, but for the users, nothing would change. You may get a different physical card because it's now linked to a new bank, but hardly anyone knows the back end of their Apple card anyway. Well, I had heard it was because Goldman Sachs had put a lot of money into it and hadn't recouped money from the the effort, and it's actually costing them a lot of money. Um, yeah, I, I, so I think the, I'd read one like that usually, too. Too many people are usually, yeah. Too many people are paying it, off their balances and not um, uh, because there's no. Uh, Apple doesn't charge any fees that normal banks charge. The only only way they make their money is on um, percentage for carrying a balance. So if you pay off your balance every month, they don't make any money and they don't like you. Now, are you talking about the Apple credit card now or the yeah. Apple savings account or are they together? They're kind of together. If you have an Apple credit card, uh, there's also an Apple savings account that goes along uh, next to it. It's all about money. So if they don't want to continue, they, you know that they're not making uh, money or they're losing money or they're not making enough money. And it's Goldman Sachs. So they want what they want out of the deal. Yeah, I think it only ties into your Apple card. I don't believe you can um, get the Apple savings by itself. Yeah, only available to Apple card holders. So maybe that was a little bit to appease um, um, Goldman Sachs because then they'll get the interest on that money. Um, the people people are putting money into the savings account that then they can invest and earn interest on that way. Um, and my screen is not showing the. Oh, because I have it, I have it um, moved over so it doesn't show the chat window. All right. So um, let me bring up the lost somewhere. Chrome. There we go. I'll bring this up. All right, are you seeing my Safari screen? I think. Yep. Okay. Yep. So uh, Apple's third quarter ended, uh, end of July, um, $81 billion in revenue. And that was down 1%. So that's horrible. So 1% of $80 billion, so they're $8 billion lower than they should be. And nearly $20 billion in profit. And as typical, the uh, iPhone makes up about half of that, of their revenue. And services is a continual growing uh, section. So that includes the app stores and the um, uh, subscription services. Uh, but this was the third quarter, which is typically down. So next quarter um, will be the... Um, um, Christmas quarter, so so first quarter, well, f actually, no, fourth quarter, then Christmas quarter. So you can kind of see, you know, Christmas and then down, 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 you know, Christmas and down, down, down. Uh, year over year, uh, they've been, so they're less down than they were last quarter, which investors like. Uh, profits are down, but sort of commiserate with the um, uh, overall revenue. 6.8 billion uh, in uh, Mac revenue alone. So I've, the the sort of the joke is that Apple made 20 billion dollars in profit, and if they split out their core businesses, each core business would be in the Fortune 10 of um, massive businesses. The iPad is down a little bit for the quarter. My phone was down a little bit. So a typical third quarter, um, except services is still on the rise. Wearables was kind of flat. 
So that's the, the watch, your wearables, home, and accessories. So that's the watch, the home pod, um, and things that, uh, that connect with the watch and the home pod. And um, to no surprise, uh, Amer the Americas is the largest section. Now, I'm pretty sure that's North America and South America because they don't break South America out separately. In fact, I just read that someone in Europe they were talking about the seven continents, and and here in the U.S. we consider North America and South America separate continents, but in other other countries they don't. All the, the Americas are one continent because we're uh, we're we're too uh, too U.S. centric to for, to remember all the other countries. Uh, let's see, China was up. This China is also a very large um, uh, market. I'm, I'm a little surprised I haven't split out India separately, because that's also a huge market, all by itself. So all in all, Apple um, stock is, uh, is doing uh, really well. Keep in, except for this week. Except for this week, yeah. But stay in for the long haul. Yeah. And um, well, one of the things I I just don't understand when you have a company, if you go back to how much do they make? Twenty million, twenty billion. Twenty billion in revenue on eighty billion in um, uh, no, no, twenty no, billion in, in profit 20 billion on profit. eighty and eighty billion of revenue. Right. And. Everybody thinks that Apple is going down the tubes. <laughs> yeah. They're selling the stock. Well, I don't care. <laughs> you know, let them do it. I'll, I'll buy more. And, um, you know, this is something that you know, I just never understood over the years how uh, if they even have a little bit of a downturn. Yeah. But they're still making twenty billion dollars in profit, more than almost any, probably more than any other company in the world. Even in a down cycle, you know, you got to ask the question: What's going on? Yeah, and especially if you look at the long term of their stock, you know, even even one year, um, it's been a continual growth, and now it. it dropped down a little bit but you know overall it just it keeps growing and growing now don't you wish no. you bought the stock when it was three dollars or four dollars because it's 178 now <laughs> well I, so it's, I bought yeah, up six thousand percent <laughs> yeah i bought ample in 1996 at 35 dollars just 10 shares yeah and it's, um, it's split a couple of times since then, too. Well, with all the stock splits and everything, and I even sold part of it, and I still have, you know, quite a bit. I can't sell it right now because the uh, the tax I would have to pay. So I'm stuck. I'm going to have to give it to my heirs. <laughs> you can leave it to apple cider <laughs> oh let, let me write that what is it apple let me write that down apple cider <laughs> <laughs> just like i heard that somebody won that billion dollar mega millions or whatever it was in california again because last time it was california too yeah Riverside, California, I think. Oh, was. okay. Somebody in Florida won too. Oh, sorry, Florida, not yeah. California, Florida. But again, by the time you take the tax out and everything with that, it's like what you're going to buy your own. You could buy Apple. You know, would you? Uh, you could buy companies if you had the know-how. You could buy an island. <laughs> yeah. I mean. It's so like ridiculous. If, if, you took the, if you took the cash equivalent, yeah, but that's still like if, if of one point five billion, you're talking about, you would only get only like five hundred million dollars. That's still pretty good. 
I I feel sad for those people. <laughs> <laughs> Good for them. Uh, yeah. How well, many tickets did you guys buy? I didn't buy any to that one. I think I spent $20 total. I was going to go buy them. And then <laughs> yeah, the last... Um, uh, the last, the last big one, one there was a fifty thousand dollar winner at at my Parrington Wegmans, and that that's as close as I've ever come to winning a jackpot mm -hmm. or any any <laughs> any big amount of money. <laughs> it was my Wegmans, so it's that joke where I don't want to check <laughs> because until I check, it could be me. <laughs> as soon as I check, I know it's not me. <laughs> and actually, I was I was talking with them at the service desk about it, and they said the person that did win wanted their money right then from Wegmans. And it's, 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 Wegmans. Oh, sure. We don't do that. you got to go to Farmington, no, the, the lottery office in Farmington. And then they give you one of those giant checks, and then you got to try to cash that. No. <laughs> so all we need is, uh, is uh, money, money, money. Well, it's a dollar in a dream, like they say, right? Yep. Well, two dollars in a dream. Yeah, two dollars in a dream. <laughs> Either that or a dollar in a nightmare. Yeah. Well, you know, it's Dorinda's birthday next month, right? And she's having a big party for her 40th, my daughter. So I thought that I would get her $41 lottery tickets. <laughs> and she's bound to win something out of that somewhere. I think she'd rather have the $40. Well, but I mean, it's yeah, the it's, it's fun to do that, though. Yeah, think about oh, I could win, and you know, yeah. she might win win a little chunk of money. You never know. It's the suspense, the mystery of it all, right? All right. So, what is okay? You're still doing your thing. Yeah. So let's see if there's any other. Did any, anybody uh, um, a member of Apple Arcade playing all the games for free that are in 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 the arcade? I guess it's pretty good if you're a casual gamer. I guess I can get a uh, membership since I bought something, and, but I've yeah. never had the interest in it. Yeah, when you buy a new Apple device, you, there's a three-month trial of um, Apple TV+, Plus, Apple Arcade, Apple Music, several of the different Apple um, uh, services. A free trial so you get sucked into it. Tarka had a three-month free free membership to Apple TV, which I took advantage of. So they've been offering all sorts of free memberships to stuff. They just offered one for TripAdvisor for a year for free, which I guess is $99. So this is interesting that Apple um, um, shows have won 50, uh, or not won, um, 54 Emmy uh, nominations. One of the Emmys this year? Let's see if it I don't think they're holding them this year because of the strike. Well, they were I'm not sure when they... They were nominated. Um, right, but September I'm just saying that's when they're doing it. But right now, they are going to televise it. Yeah. Unless the strike gets over by then. Well, they might not have a show, you know, a show. A show. They might have, still have the... No, they're the pretty hard. They'll still have the, uh, the the Academy Awards. It depends on how long the strike goes on. Well, I mean, there's still gonna. I mean, there's still movies out there that qualify for this year. So. Oh yeah, but I'm just in, saying as in March. To in March is them. usually when they have the Academy Awards, and they're still gonna have them. Oh well, by March we hope this is all over with. I'm sure. I'm but sure even even if it's not done by March, they'll still have an Academy Awards. It's too much money to not have it. Well, they did do the Tonys, and they got special permission to to have the Tony Awards. Well, the uh, Broadway well, the speakers, speakers had to right. ad lib. Yeah, because there's no writers. Right. So the speakers ad libbed it and just said whatever. Yeah. Let me and see. Um, has somebody writing it for them? They wrote their own things, I guess. Shirley's so, audio is breaking up for me. Is it breaking up for anyone else? Her computer's too old. No. <laughs> but she sounds good to you. Yep. Hmm. Okay, it might be my machine. No, I'm... You, 
Rick, you kind of have like a, a static. I've got a static? Yeah, it sounds like you have static in your background. Oh, okay. Hmm. That's probably at my end then. Well, that's true. I could hear that. All right. So, all right. Yeah. So the September 18th Emmys have been postponed. Twenty years Ooh. since it was postponed last again. Probably that was probably when the last strike was. Yeah. Uh, currently rescheduled for January of 2024. How about the Academy Awards? The Oscars. Well, that's next year, so that's probably fine. I think you might be hearing the fan of my MacBook Pro. That sounds like a fan. Yeah, so we already did this year's was in March. So let's see next year, 2024. No ceremony in 2024. Maybe because, oh, it, maybe it hasn't happened yet versus just not happening at all. Let me uh, ask your nominations for 2024. Currently held on March, or, or scheduled for March 10th. So we'll have to see what happens by then to see if it uh, it actually shows or not. So we're seeing a lot of interesting things come out from the strike. And um, other, there's a, I read a story of, the, of um, visual effects artists are, are starting to unionize. And Let's see. It's funny because you, you think you see these people on strike and you think that's bad that they're not being able to work. But now it, it actually gives more power to the unions. And yeah, Marvel VFX artists um, are the first visual effects artists to unionize. Because there's so many Marvel VFX films. There was a interesting back and forth. Um, I forget what show it was on, but um, Fran Drescher is the president of the of the actors union, and she was rebutting something one of the studio heads said. Uh, basically, the studio heads are saying, "You know, we're offering all this stuff, and we can't understand why they're not taking it." And um, it was basically, "We're going to give you a five percent raise, but that's." spread out over three years and it's already way below the cost of living increase and 90 well no 86 86 percent of registered um union members um so sag and aftra uh, earn less than 25 dollars uh, twenty five thousand dollars a year um which is the the um poverty line so you know very few number of actors actually make it big and, and earn a ton of money. Uh, in fact, um, uh, who was it? The Rock, um, Dwayne Johnson, uh, put a huge donation to the um, um, union uh, to help um, the actors that are on strike and not getting paid now. Uh, and then a bunch of other, here it is, a bunch of other um, uh, uh, big name artists have also started donating money or uh, or part of a, their salary for a recent movie. Yeah, believe it or not, The Rock is one of the highest, if not the highest, paid uh, actor in Hollywood. He had a couple of flops recently, though, with Black Adam. So that's uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, but he next still week. he still gets he paid. Up, he got his money up front. Yeah. Well, and part of the problem with the strike the is, is the now. residuals on um, streaming, especially. And a bunch of actors started posting their, their streaming paychecks. Uh, somebody from, um, oh, what was it? This Is Us and 
two or three huge shows. They showed their residual paycheck of 23 cents. You know, that's what I, that's what I made last quarter on residuals from streaming. Um, and so the actors typically have um, uh, uh, only gotten their... Uh, oh, Tom Cruise, it says. Well, because Mission Impossible was so big, so he jumped, must have jumped ahead. Um, the actors' contracts have, have traditionally just been for the movie itself. And then I think the last big strike was over DVD rights uh, as a new form of media came out. And now, you know, the new streaming services... So every every time there's a new way to watch movies, um, the actors feel they should be paid for their work, mm -hmm. which yeah, you can kind of understand that. Yeah. But this is the writers. This is not the actors. Right. The, and the writers are the and, people that make the actors so big. <laughs> and one of the things that's happening with, you know, uh, if you're talking about just the actors, a lot of them, if they know they have – a blockbuster what they're going to do is they may take a lower salary but they're going to uh, demand a percentage of the profits yeah and this is where they make you know their money over decades of these you know uh rebroadcast rebroadcast rights and they get money for all that and if That's they old. do a percentage um, they actually end up making a lot more money in addition to they get a, a certain base salary. And a lot of these um, low-budget films who hire big-time actors, they may give them, like, you know, just $1 million, but we'll give you 10% of whatever, the you know, the, the movie makes. And some of them have made, you know, a lot of money. For the for them, so you know, percentage of whatever the uh, the movie makes is a uh, is a big thing. But that has Bar to do with the writers. I mean, the writers don't get that. Well, look at Barbie. How much money Barbie has made, and it just started. We're not even talking like you know, everywhere else. So the actors in there, if they were smart, made get a percentage of that or not depending on how their contract works yeah so that's... i'm making a, i'm making a movie called ken <laughs> ken <laughs> i watched the barbie dream house challenge where they took a house and made it into a barbie barbie dream house and is they ken, made up yes yeah, so and they made a uh ken's man cave which there was never a um, uh, Ken room in the Barbie dream house, but they added one on it. So they made him a disco floor and they had a shelf where they put all his, his fake wigs and mustaches and stuff. And uh, it was very cute. It was, it's on HGTV. You know, kind of thing. they did the I pool have, in the back. And... Yeah, I just have to let you guys know that <laughs> ever since, you know, Barbie and Ken came out, and, you know, it kind of disturbed me that, that Ken never had a penis. <laughs> <laughs> you could always and, give him one. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking at myself and I said, am I odd? Well, you know, it's a fantasy thing. You know, well, I always girl, had, little girls didn't care about Ken. Now. I always had G.I. Joes and my G.I. Joes and their Kung Fu grip and their military vehicles would always overrun uh, Barbie's uh, um, camper or, or car or whatever and, you know, kill Ken and make off with Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> so I noticed our dumb numbers here tonight are down a little bit. I'm wondering if some of that might be due to the fact that um, if you clicked on the link that was in email, the it didn't come up. It said the meeting hasn't started yet. Yeah, the, I explained that earlier, probably before you got here. The lounge software kept telling me my password was wrong, so I had to log in differently and make a new link. So I sent out a new email with the new link on it, and the link is on, okay. the, on the web page. All right. 
So, are we going to I, discuss something of computer yeah, I think value? That's, today? I think that's about done with the news. Any, anybody else have any newsy things that they want to talk about? Uh, I was telling Steve that I had an old 2007 iMac that wasn't running the current Mac operating system, so I decided to see if I could install Ubuntu on it. And I did, and it runs great, and it's a modern operating system. So then I decided, well, I'll try it on my old 2008 MacBook, which is a black MacBook. And that only has two gigs of RAM, and it runs fine on that, too. Yep. It doesn't need uh, as much hardware as, uh, as typical machines these days. You should try uh, Chrome OS on one. To see I did. Works. I used to have the Chrome OS on the 2008 uh, Mac, yeah. and it was fine on that. But then, when uh, Google bought up the Neverwhere, I decided, eh, I don't have to deal with them anymore. Yeah, don't like. <laughs> cool. All right. Any other newsy things? Um, Steve, <clears throat> I want to mention since we're at a, a shifting point in our program tonight that I sent you or thought I did a private chat message. Um, and if by the end of the meeting, you can reply to it, that'd be great. There's no I, rush. I tried, but it looks like the address I have isn't working. So I asked Nick if he's got his current address. Thank you. All righty, I guess we'll move into Q and A. Anyone have any questions? Yeah, I do have a question. Uh, on my 2020 iMac, Reminders keeps pop popping up. Um, it doesn't really open, but it shows in my that it is um, an active application. And I don't know why it keeps showing up as an active application when I have not clicked on it. I've gone through the settings. I've gone through a lot of different things and all, you know, this is just recently that this has happened. Um, check your login items and make sure it's not set there so it opens itself. Yeah, yeah. no, it doesn't come on when I log in. Uh, usually it's after it's been running. Uh, right now it's um, I use a, a program called iCollections, so it shows all my open, open applications. But the reminder is, is kind of grayed out unless I click on it. Then I click on it, and it brings it up, and I don't know why this is showing up. I haven't selected it, gone through all different settings, and I can't figure out why this thing keeps showing up. And I haven't selected it. It'll show up if you have a reminder due. I've checked and I've made sure I had no reminders due. There's nothing that's in there. I don't even use reminders. Hmm. So let's see what will trigger reminders without a reminder. But so if you I go, mean, it's move, not a real big castle, and that it doesn't do anything in the background or anything. When you go uh, into the to the reminders app, it doesn't have any um, any active reminders. They're all set. They're all at zero. They're all zero. Yeah. Hmm. Everything is zero. Yeah. Nothing. Here's one where I made sure, I made sure to. You know, anything that had a one or two or whatever that got rid of it, and nothing is show zero. There's someone with the opposite problem. Reminders turns off without them wanting to. Without them wanting to. You 
might want to try deleting the preference file. The preference file. I'm getting an echo getting back on my machine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, somebody oh, new just somebody joined. Somebody new just joined. Whoever the, whoever the, whoever latest, the, person whoever the latest person is. is. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you're set to yeah, your make headphones. Make sure you're set to your headphones. Because your microphone is your picking microphone up is picking. the uh, audio we're giving. Um, let's see, how can we Google that? Um, finders. Opening all the time. Yeah, I, I would, general troubleshooting is delete the reminders preference file. So somewhere in your, in library preferences, there's probably a reminders P list. Is it R-E-M-I-N-D-D? -D? That's probably the application, the daemon that checks for reminders, but it would check a preference file to see if it needs to launch. Let's see if I, let me check if I look in my preferences folder, is there a reminder? Yeah, there, well, there's three. Interesting, there's one, I've got one, a basic reminder list and, a, and then a, um, uh, reminder babysitter list, which is interesting. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Let me uh, switch windows there. Um, yeah, I would say delete both of those and um, restart the machine just to be safe. Okay. So this, so the, the preference list is what your reminders are set to do. No, that's lots of gibbly gock that no one can understand. But typical troubleshooting is um, delete the preference file and relaunch the program. Yeah, I came right All righty. Any else? See what happens. Yeah. I'd, I'd probably say restart just to be safe, so maybe you can do that afterwards if you want. Got a quick question for Charlie. Uh, were you able to work out your uh, printing issue with the gray text and that type of thing? Rick, uh, thanks for bringing that up. I was just about to tell you how things went with that. Um, I had been unaware that you could copy things from a PDF and open them in pages. Um, I don't know whether when you suggested that you actually tried it on that document or not. But what happened was I started with the um, table of contents page, so to speak. And when I selected all, it's peculiar because it would, um, the table of contents is in two columns and each is a topic and a page number. And then the right column is topic and page number. And when you select all, what you get is uh, the topics on the left are selected. And then the page number for those topics is selected along with the topic to the right and its page number. So when I copied that into pages, I kind of got gobbledygook. But um, I was able to uh, fudge around and just expand the, pre the uh, window in... Um, um preview uh, enough to uh, to get things large enough to uh, um, you know be able to read what I was looking at and the other thing I did is uh, in preview I, I highlighted the uh, um, headings for each section in the table of contents uh, on at its own section in the document um, so I've been uh, going through that and uh, it has been very interesting. Thanks for your help on that. Um, this has to do with a GoPro camera and the user guide for it. And uh, for a tiny little thing, uh, it's got a lot of stuff in it uh, that you can screw around with uh, intentionally or otherwise. 
uh, and uh, I'm trying to do a little bit of intention intentionally and not any other way. Um, yeah. But it was also a really funny thing because I tried. You can review the videos in the in the camera on the. It's got a little touch screen on the back. It's like an inch and a half by two inches or something. And you can look at your videos on that. And uh, when I did that, it appeared that I had lost some of them. But then I was able to uh, connect the camera to my iPad uh, by Wi-Fi and open the same thing up. And the videos that I thought had been lost were there. So uh, it, it's an ongoing uh, it's an ongoing process. I'm basically using it to uh, with the intention of recording bicycle rides in faraway places so that when February comes and everything's crappy outside, I can sit there and cruise down a bike path someplace and enjoy greenery and uh, and things that I saw. So thanks for your help. Okay. And speaking of uh, recording things on the bike path, one of my birthday gifts this year was a helmet that has a built-in camera. Cool. So that I can do video as I'm going along. Um, one of the interesting things about it is it also has a Wi-Fi uh, signal that it will broadcast and you can log into it with your iPhone or your iPad or whatever. But it's a private network. And I was wondering if there was some way that I could uh, bridge that over so that I could live stream to YouTube. Can you think of a way to do that, Steve? Well, you come in on Wi-Fi and go out on cellular. That should work. Can you do both at the same time, or? Yeah. Hmm. Um. But I'm pretty sure the YouTube app only will see the iPhone camera. Yeah, so that's not going to do it. Um, what is the problem with that? What are you What are you then missing? Well, it's the helmet camera that I want to have go out to YouTube. Right, and and does, is Steve saying that YouTube should be able to access the helmet camera? Well, I'm I'm thinking it will, by default, only access the uh, um, iPhone camera not an external camera well i am seeing the android app will let you use an external camera can you connect the helmet camera to your iphone and then the iphone to youtube to live stream well this is what we're trying to see if we can use a phone as a bridge oh okay gotcha i'm you know pretty ignorant about this stuff i do know that the instructions for the GoPro camera have include live streaming, but since um, I am not expecting to do that, so I kind of skipping that in favor of learning about things I actually have to do. Yeah, that's built into the camera. Uh, let's see. Um, see, uh, Rick, what what brand is the camera? Well, I'd have to go and get it. <laughs> oh. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. It's just downstairs. Well, I see videos on how to use an external camera, but I think he's using the a computer, not the iPhone app. So one of the problems is you see all of these videos, and they're all yeah. He's using he's using a computer. When you're looking for phone help, it shows you a computer, and when you're looking for, um, uh, you know, computer help, it shows you a phone. There might be a way to do a screen capture. So YouTube will capture the screen instead of the camera.
Well, here's someone that says they did it with a DLSR camera. What is DLSR? Digital single lens reflex. DSLR, okay. Yeah, rather, yeah, and so the SLR is a typical professional camera. Right. And then they throw a D on it for digital. Uh, let's see, how do I get to chapters? So I hate YouTube videos that have chapter markers, but don't let you jump to different chapters. Okay, so there's the helmet. You can see the camera here, right there. Yeah. And it has a place for your uh, memory card up here. And you can just there's a slot and you stick it in here. You know, so it, it records while you're going along. Um, and then you can just you know take the card and either uh, connect with the Wi-Fi to your computer after you get home, or you can just you know directly take the card out and connect it to your computer that way. Right. Can you tell what brand the camera is? Uh, it says it's a Foxware V8 Smart Helmet Cam. Hold on while I blow you up here. Foxware V8 helmet cam, indeed. And the other cool thing about it is it has, um, I'm trying to get this in the camera right, it is signal lights and a brake light type warning thing on the bottom here. And those will flash if you uh, use the remote control for it. So left and right and brake for warning. Is the remote control something you mount on your handlebar? Yeah, that's correct. It's kind of slick. Yeah. yeah. But I just thought it would be neat if you could do a live stream, you know, because that's what YouTube likes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm seeing videos on the on the helmet cam itself, but I'm not seeing something on how to get YouTube to see that camera. I haven't played with the um, YouTube iPhone app that much mm -hmm. to try to. Yeah, go so live. you bring it home, you hook it up to your computer, and then you upload it to YouTube. Well, that's fine. <laughs> One of the things uh, uh, when I've used the GoPro on my helmet is uh, it can hear me muttering to myself. And uh, I'm not entirely sure I would want a live stream to hear everything I'm saying as I'm attempting to ride the damn bicycle. <laughs> But one of the videos that I thought I'd lost and that I did found again was uh, uh, a very nice one of one of my two crashes last fall. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> it was enjoyable watching that again. And, and it, it caught the nice people who came over and picked me up and offered to give me a ride back to the asylum in their pickup truck and uh, things like that. Yeah, my last ride, I had a problem with my shifting cable. The thing had broken. So Carol and I had to uh, pull over and try to jury rig something to hold that up. Yeah, I, I thought I was doing great. I was in uh, three eight, and I thought, wow, yeah, this is normally my toughest gear, and I, I'm just flying. And I looked down, and I noticed, oh, that's because it's really one eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the the failed cable was on your front uh, chain wheels. Yeah, it was on the front. Yeah. You've been searching for a helmet cam for video streaming. It keeps coming up with other cameras you put on your helmet. Yeah. That's why I thought this one was nice. It's kind of built in. Yeah, and then you can edit all your swear words out when you fall over. <laughs> yeah. 
Ja. It was uh, also interesting because when I first looked at the the uh, card, uh, there was something called events, and I went, "What the heck is that?" And I opened it up, and I'm going, "Most of my video is missing. Where did it go?" That's under normal. Apparently, it knows that when you're moving your head around a lot, there's some event going on, and so it takes um, that video section and it copies it and it puts it into the events folder. Uh huh. But I thought that was nifty. Does the camera have an HDMI out on it? By any chance? Yeah, it's HDMI. Yeah. So, yeah, there are ways to plug the HDMI camera into your phone and use that as the, um, use the oh, external camera in your phone. I, I take that back. It's it, There's no HDMI out. It's, um, there's just a USB charger. Yeah, that, that's all it is. All right. But it's that Wi-Fi where you just have to take the card out and plug it into your computer. Yeah, I would I would try opening a stream, well, connecting to the camera while it's running, and then in the YouTube app, see if you can change input uh, devices or or even capture the screen when you have the um, the helmet cam screen open. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Right. Let's see if I can look up my YouTube app real quick here on my phone. Because every device is um, slightly different. I don't want to cast. Where's the live stream? I can, now, now I can't find the live stream button. <laughs> Did they move it? I don't know. That's just a record. I can't do mobile live streaming because I don't have enough um, um, subscribers. <laughs> All righty, so we'll uh, see what the limit is. So instead of using the YouTube app, you might have to use a different streaming app that can see that external camera as a source. So they're kind of like po pointing you to OBS if you were on a computer. Yep. Okay. All righty. Well, send us some videos. All right. Any other questions? Yes, yeah, Steve. Uh, do you replace batteries in the iPhone of your shop? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. But how much is that? Depends on the phone, Depends but, on it's the phone but it's about eighty dollars. Okay, I'm down to about seventy-six percent. I was on vacation. I kept running, get running out of them. <laughs> One trick you can do is uh, do put the phone is, into uh, low power mode. Into low power mode. And then it, it and then the battery, it, lasts, the battery longer lasts longer because it's not, because because it's not to, trying to. It's really, really annoying me to really annoying for myself. For myself. For Ten myself. seconds later, seconds it's really, um, it's uh, really uh, uh, the phone uh, stops the phone trying stops, to sync photos to sync and, photos um, and um, uh, download things uh, in the uh, background. So it saves the battery for using it as a camera for later. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, I have one other question. I saw an ad someplace where you, you get two different people at different places watching the same TV program, but they can c communicate back and forth together while they're watching. Yeah, that's you know, uh, yeah, that's generally called a watch party. Called a watch party, and a lot of and a um, lot of um, services have that built in. YouTube has it built in. Apple TV has it built in. Has it built in. So usually it so usually it depends, so on the, depends on the on the service you're on the using. Service you're using. Oh, okay. But in you know but in, in the, the earlier days, the earlier days, you just tell you just tell your friend we're going to start watching this movie at eight o'clock sharp, sharp on whoever's on streaming, streaming service has it, service has it, or even on DVDs. Even on DVDs. <laughs> and then you have a chat yeah, window, have a chat open, window or open or a FaceTime window open. 
FaceTime has well, watch parties, parties built in too, so you can point so you can point your camera at your something camera and a bunch of people can watch and talk to it. Watch and talk to it. There's no, no people who just joined us. us. Uh, if you're if not, you're not talking, talking, please mute your mic so we don't get this feedback going yeah, on. It's, it's Frank. It's Frank. So his his mic is hearing his speakers and feeding it back in because he's not using headphones. So that's a big trick when you're on uh, live streams is uh, or even streams period of video chatting. Uh, really helps to have headphones or or ear pods or anything. That way it doesn't uh, feed back so easily. Yeah, see, now everything's fine. Yeah. Thank you. So according yeah. to YouTube, you need at least 50 subscribers to have limited streaming and 1,000 subscribers to have full streaming. Wow. Wow. Google keeps changing the rules. Yeah. But yeah, so watch, the Frank Watch Party is the, is the kind of phrase you're looking for. That's, uh, that's what it's been called. So if you if everyone has Amazon or everyone has Google, everyone has Apple TV, then you can have a watch party themselves. Uh, there's also an app called Watch Party, um, where you can yeah, everyone using the same app, and and then one person feeds their video into the app, um, so that you can um, uh, uh, watch it all together at the same time. Let me see if I can bring it up. Here. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, yeah, let's go to share tab. Okay. Oops. Three tab is what I want. Yeah, so you can synchronize play, you can put playlists together. Works with YouTube or anything that has sharing built in. Let's, I don't see a price anywhere. I see a subscribe button to support and get additional features. So you get one room for free. There you go. Or you can get 20 rooms for $5 a month. If, uh, if you want to have 20 different parties going on. <laughs> so this is a standalone app called Watch Party. Is on high. I can hear him. <laughs> oh, here comes another one. All right, it went away. It went away. Alrighty, any other questions? Alrighty, shall we take a short break to hydrate and then we'll get back and show some weird uh, my phone can do that apps or features. Oh, features good. that are built into the app to the phone in many cases. Alrighty.
guess we're almost here. We're missing Carol, right? I got to figure out which. I've got to figure out which guest you are so I can make you a presenter. <laughs> well, I don't have anything that you can actually see. I'm just going to read it off. Well, no, you got to bring like this side up so we can see what you're talking about. Or bring your phone well, up. Well, I don't have a, I don't have a site. That's the whole point. To show people well, how to do this. There's all sorts of things from different places. That's not one site. It's so, not like what you do. So you keep a bunch of tabs open. Well, I'm, that's not the way I have it set up. So you, I can tell you where to go and you could bring it up as I go through it. That's probably a good idea, given that he he's going to have a hard time identifying who you are, which guest you are. Mute and unmute yourself rapidly, and then I'll I can see the icons change. All right, gotcha. <laughs> well, maybe we could all do that. Type in a name. Doesn't matter. So you don't want to present it yourself? Well, I just have a things that I was reading off because the site that I have doesn't actually, unless you want to call it AARP, has a site where it did a page on about 15 different apps. Yeah. So that's if what... that's a site you want to go to, it's, uh, it's the aarp.org slash bulletin for December. So what's the address? You're not going to aarp.org slash bulletin. And the bulletin was dated December. I don't see any and dates it's under, on any bulletins. It's December 2021. I don't see any dates at all on any of the articles I'm looking at. Well, I, I can't tell you. It's just under your tech. It's the section of the bulletin. <clears throat> I can't even find it I on their website. You. Well, I'm just telling you, see, this is the problem. I see this, and now you're like, I can't find it. You're well, looking at a piece I... of paper. You, you should have bookmarked the link, so then you can publish the link, and then we can all look at it. Sorry. Sorry. That's the way it is. I'm not a computer person like you. All right. so you're going to have to hold a piece of paper me. up in front of the camera so we can all read along. You don't have to read along. You're going to jump all over me. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All I have are some things from a, the ERP bulletins. There's from a couple different dates on them with little things about different things your iPhone can do, which some of you probably already know some of these kind of things, such as it can read to you. Instead of you reading the book, it will read, it'll read to you. And you can adjust the speaking rate and choose from what different kinds of voices you like. And for that, you go to the accessibility menu 
and tap on voice over. Okay, are you pre-presenting now, Shirley, or is this- Yes, I am. Is? I'm just doing it my way. Sorry if it's not the professional way. No, but what I mean is, it, have you started your presentation or- Yes. Okay, yes. Shirley is underway here. I'm underway. If you want to write these things down, or like I said, some of you probably know some of these already. Kind of thing. Another thing is it can caption your video calls. So if you get a video call from someone at a noisy place, it says take it, and then your phone can create real-time captions of what's being said. And that again is under the accessibility menu under live captions option. Surely, sorry to interrupt here, but is what? this referring specifically to iPhones, not Android? Yes, this is only iPhones. It okay. does have a thing for Androids too, if you have an Android phone. But since we're all iPhone users, I didn't think that people wanted to worry about an Android. Right. right? Yeah, I mean, the thing is that that captioning thing may refer to a particular version of iOS, iOS or later type thing, you know what I mean? Well, on the Android phone, it just says go into settings and tap on sound, then choose live captions. Right. And then, so you get my point that it's, uh, Apple introduces these features in successive versions of their operating systems. The, this one is from June. So I'm imagining it doesn't say anything about the late what, what versions of these are. So um, some of the other things I found did say what versions you had to be up to in order to access them. But this one didn't. So I don't see anything on here as to which I'm assuming whatever's up to date at the time this is written. There's another version where it said it can listen to important sounds. So like if you haven't you didn't hear the doorbell or the dogs barking or somebody crying, you can set it up to listen for specific sounds and alert you. So I guess in the accessibility menu again, it's sound recognition. You can find that and then I guess fine tune it. It can translate a conversation. So if somebody who can't speak English, you can, um, it has a translate app. And then you, you pick your language and then you pull down another menu that selects the, the language the other person is speaking and then you can type what you want or you can use the microphone and it will translate back and forth. Which sounds interesting. That sounds really useful. Kind of slow, but you know, you don't have too complicated a message, I guess. And then um, let's see. This other one is from 2021, so this might be so a little older. But again, it's a weather reporter, so you can launch a weather app on there and pick whatever third party party person you want to put on there. And of course, we know it's a video camera, so you can record. You can download an, uh, an app to stream for a radio, so you can hear around the world, which I think, Charlie, you've already done some of that, haven't you? We had somebody, and I don't remember who did the presentation, on right. something called, like, I don't know, Planet Radio, or what is yeah. that app called that shows radio stations all over the world? It wasn't me, but. Yeah, I thought, okay. As I heard so you can find a free app. Audacity. Uh, you not, can not find not. a free app for that. Well, it says uh, Audacity, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and Pandora have those. I think it's Radio Garden. Radio Garden, maybe? That sounds well, good. I like it. I like it. Thank you. Whoever that's you good. are. <laughs> that's it's Kim. Kim. <laughs> it's right. guests. It's Kim. guests, parentheses. <laughs> you, you yeah, can also Radio make... Garden. That's the one. You can also make your iPhone into a document scanner. 
by opening the Notes app and tapping the icon and then the camera icon and you can select scan document. So then you just put it in auto mode and then your do document will automatically scan. You make it a kitchen timer by using the clock app and tap the timer. You can, you, of course, you know about the flashlight. It's also a library where you can get Libby and all the different book places. Voice recorder. There's emergency broadcast system. So you can get Amber Alerts or weather alerts or whatever it is you want to do. It, it can what become a Surely I apologize. What was it after library? After the library, it was voice recorder. All right. We have the voice memos app. Next one's the emergency broadcast system about the alerts and um, which it works by default. So that's already on there. You can do the tape measure. Tap the measure, open the measure app and tap the measure icon at the bottom of the screen. Point your camera at the object you want to measure. And then move your phone and it will with a plus and it does a, it also ha becomes a level if you want it to be a level. And you have the calculator. It has a restroom finder. Through a third party app such as Flush, Bathroom Scout or <laughs> Fit or Squat. And then some of them will actually list the quality of the restroom and indicate whether they are accessible and whether or not you need a key to get into it. Will Which it tell you whether there's enough toilet paper in it? <laughs> it could do that. Who knows? <laughs> the reason I mentioned this is it's funny. I went for a ride in Fairport for a Saturday or Sunday, and I started out at this nice parking lot that has a couple nice restrooms there. But I went in uh, to go into one of them, and it said vacant, but there was a guy in there. But but he wasn't <laughs> he wasn't using the facilities per se. He was trying to get into the toilet paper dispenser to get some for his wife, who was in the one next door with their little kid who needed wiping up. And uh, <laughs> so there you go. You know, there's never there's all kinds of tech, but never exactly what you need or whatever. Yes, they need a little app in those bathrooms that says out of toilet paper. <laughs> well, it, it, that app for me is stick your hand up in there and make sure there's a roll before. Yes. You yeah, the I do. Before you can do your business. You could also, there's a magnifying glass, which you can do. Yeah. And, and there's a pedometer in the health app, which automatically counts your steps. And then we have the navigation system. So we know that. Those are ones from AARP, from their bulletins. Each month they have a tech, a tech thing. Every so often they have new things on it. And then I went to the um, to the web, and I found some other things just by saying asking for features that the iPhone can do. I did find an interesting app that you can count. It's called iScanner, and it says count any objects in one tap with the iScanner app. So I'm assuming that it just take a picture of it and then. It will automatically count them for you. So those pictures where they say, how many jelly beans are in this jar? And you could win $100. <laughs> I suppose you could take a picture of it and it says X amount. You could just double it because obviously you can't see everyone that's in the jar. Right. But um, but I thought that sounded interesting. What was that called, Shirley? It's, called, it's an app called iScanner from the App Store. Just ran across that today. So this one says, just listing them, and it says you can tap the back of your phone to do things. You can erase text, activate a secret mouse, stop accidentally ending calls, take a mirrored selfie, set custom sound recognition, 
Call 911 without typing. And then, um, let's see. Enable face ID when wearing a mask. Cast me Harry Potter spell. Cast Harry Potter spells using Siri. That one sounds interesting. Okay, and then this one says, what about the Apple spy feature? Well, Apple iPhones can be used as a microphone to secretly listen to the com to conversations while being in another room via the listen li to the live listen feature. This was designed to help users hear a conversation in a noisy area or even hear someone speaking across the room. And then the secret button. It says, how to use the Apple logo as a secret button. So once you have set up back tap, using the feature is very easy. You just double tap or triple tap the back of your iPhone or where the Apple logo is. It says, even when you have a case on. Okay, um, it has a private mode, so you can visit sites privately. So the tab bar at the bottom of the screen, you can tap private, and tabs in that aren't shared with your other Apple devices, even if you sign in with the same Apple ID. So only on one device, I'm assuming. You can use three fingers pinch together on the display and it will copy the text. And then you do the opposite gesture to paste what you've copied. You can also, um, iPhone has special effects on iMessage. When you send a Happy New Year message, your text will be accompanied by a colorful fireworks show. Do Happy Chinese New Year, and you get the same effect. Happy birthday, congratulations, and pew pew. We'll give you automated effects. If you type the number 69, it's a call return and redials the last number that called you. 70 is a call waiting and places your call on hold so you can answer another phone. And 72 is call forwarding to... Uh, to put your call to another phone number. And 77 is anonymous call rejection and blocks calls from private callers. And where where do you where are you putting in these codes? I'm not following. Um I using? guess you just type 69. But where, no, but where are you in, in on the keyboard what are you in when you're typing it? You're on the keyboard. You know the numbers. In the phone app, you do star 69. Oh, right. star, star I'm sorry, 69. it's star, star 69. Okay. Couldn't see it was so small. All right, so star in front of all those ones. Then there's a number, and it's star 3001. Um, uh, let's see. I want to say, what was the word? Crosshatch? One, two, three, four, five, I got in a little crosshatch thing, and it's a secret code which allows your phone to enter a so-called field test mode and gives you precise data on how strong your signal strength really is. And there's another one that's when you enter star crosshatch zero star crosshatch into your phone's dialer, it enters service mode and brings up a oh. diagnostics menu. Do you mean the pound so key? You can test. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, it just eluded me. Pound key. Oh. And then you could run multiple diagnosis, diagnostics to test your device hardware, like buttons, sensors, and cameras, if you want to do that. Okay. This, uh, pardon me for interrupting, but. This sounds like a, a great list of things to put into like notes on your phone or something. So that yeah. you know, if you have a vague recollection that something might be possible, you could uh, refer to that and see. Well, see what, I, what, I, do it. what I can do is. You should have saved all the links and we can post them. Um, yeah, they're mostly. Uh, We've been trying to post some of the links in the live chat as we can find them. 
Yes, like I said, some of these probably some people have heard of. They're simpler ones versus more obscure ones. And then there's one that says, how do I recover deleted typing on your iPhone? And you give your device a quick shake. Yes. So if you've deleted some text because of the shake feature, you just give your iPhone another shake. That's the general undo. You shake the phone yes. and it undoes the last thing you did. And then you can, but you can also do redo then you're saying. Yeah, you shake it again and it's redo. Shake it again. Right. Okay, then there's Pew Pew, <laughs> which is for, la for lasers, to do a little laser show. So that's a secret code phrase, including happy, happy uh, EID for the shooting star, Pew Pew for lasers, best wishes for confetti, Happy Dippo, Dippo, Dippo Wally for fireworks. Happy Lunar New Year for celebration. And Ayakai Dogon for balloons. So if you say those, apparently you will get little fireworks or whatever. There's another thing that says how to create bubble effects with your iPhone. Like, so bubble effects, it says, are very self-explanatory effects that impact the message bubble itself. When the message bubble pops up in another person's message thread, they will see it slam, gently swell, or will have to erase away the sparkling image to reveal the message. In order to do this, you type your message, you press and hold the arrow used to send the message, and then choose from one of the bubble effects. And then there's one that says how to set up a timed hand washing feature on the iPhone. Back when they wanted you to wash your hands for 20 seconds. The, the feature will play music from Apple Music for 20 seconds so you know how long to wash your hands. Which I thought was kind of cute. And to do that you go to shortcuts and click the washing hands music shortcut. Okay, and then there's, let's see, um, what if you want to go by a nickname? Instead of Siri, you know, we'll call you by your name that's listed, but if you have a nickname and you want to be called that or something else, you can um, change it. It says, after you say, hey Siri, just tell Siri, call me by a nickname. And Siri will then ask you what you want to be called, and you can state your nickname. It will confirm it, and then you are good to go. If you're Matthew, you want to be Matt and called that, then that's what you can do. Um, you said you can do how to measure with your iPhone under the measurement app. Let's see, don't have a level, that was use your iPhone is both the level and measurement. Okay, I think I went over that one. It says, how about if you want to identify a song that's playing during a movie or on the radio and you want to know who the artist is? This is, and while there are, are third party apps, like SoundHound, you really don't need a third-party application to find out the artist or song title. Title, you just ask Siri to name that tune, it uses and then she will name. listen. And well, this one just says name that tune, Siri, and then she will listen and then give you a link to the song in Apple Music. And she, Siri uses Shazam to do that. Okay. Well. Okay, you have an emergency SOS. Okay, this is for iOS 11 and later. Okay, so you click your side power button five times and your phone will contact emergency services for you so you can focus on the emergency in front of you. You can even set it up in the health app and when emergency SOS contacts emergency services, it will also send a message to that emergency contact. So five times. This is so that you won't do it accidentally. So that's why they give you five times. Because I did it accidentally once. Yes. <laughs> yes, once or twice, right? 
that you mm -hmm. can switch to a one-handed keyboard on iPhone. So you press and hold the emoji button on your keyboard and then options pick up and you can choose the keyboard aligned to the left or to the right. And then to put it back in, back to normal, you hit, you press the arrow, which will be on the opposite side of the keyboard that you picked. That's how to screen record with an iPhone and turn on your mic, which, okay. Uh, let's see. How to make Siri complete a task within an app for you. So it says, say you are out shopping and you want to add a quick reminder to grab gas on the way home. Just use Hey Siri or your home button and say, set a reminder to get gas on my way home. Some of those are fairly simple. Here's one. Siri can save your parking spot for you. Just ask Siri, save my parking spot, parking spot for me. She will take a moment to mark your location and let you know the job is done. So when you need to find your car, you say, where am I parked? And she will show you a map and the location of your vehicle. Oh, that's a good thing to know. So that's just by asking her. We tried doing that at um, Sun and Fun with uh, 50,000 cars. Probably. In the Did they work? Uh, not, no, not we were lost. Well. We're driving around and around and around, and the thing keeps pointing us to go another direction. So we went that direction, and there wasn't anything there. This was at night in a golf cart, and the guy was getting like a little upset. And I'm sewing, so but <laughs> we kind of knew where we were, but it was like it just couldn't seem to focus in on it. And so, like everybody else, we're hitting the um, lock button on Keep our up. remote, trying to see where the car is blinking. But, but everybody else is doing it, but too. everyone else is doing it. And it doesn't <laughs> yeah. have that long a range, so you have to be pretty close anyway. Well, we did find it, but it took Eventually. longer than we thought we should have. Okay. Um, I'm going to try that one and see how well it works downtown. <laughs> I did find that my car has, because I carry the keys in my purse, it knows where the car is, because no matter how far, within a reasonable distance, and I can just pull it up and it'll say, oh, there's your car over there and show me where I, I am and where the car is automatically, which I tried that with somebody who had an Android phone and they didn't have that on their device. Whereas I could say, well, it's your car, so I can't tell you where your car is because it's not my car. So I have an AirTag in my car that I use for that, too. Also helps oh. if the car gets stolen. Yes, yeah. that's a good idea. You know, in the old days when cars had tall, skinny radio antennas, you just put a funny Stop stuffed again. animal on top of it or something. And, and then too many people would use the same one, like a Disney, you know, Mickey ears or something like that. So you got to have a unique one. And that's why I have stickers on my windows. <laughs> too many white cars. All right, then there's, um, you can make your iPhone calculator into a scientific calculator. You turn your iPhone to that's landscape exciting. and it's... And it, uh, it, well, it says simply turn your iPhone to landscape and your calculator changes from a regular one to scientific just by turning it, which is interesting. You can also straighten out your iPhone photos with a grid. So this person said, oh, I bought my first iPhone for the camera. Then I saw a friend of mine had taken this photo of a storm out of her bedroom window and edited it within her iPhone. So... It says, have you ever been taking a, a photo? Whoops, I guess I cut off that one. Sorry about that. So I guess there's a grid thing under composition Oops. that can make your photo go into a grid so you can center your photos, I guess. Under crop and rotate. Yes, and then there's one how to add captions or descriptions to your iPhone photos by going into the Photos application, swiping, clicking the captions and then type it, which I do. And I had not heard of this, but it's use, use iPhone hot corners to lock your screen. So I'm, does everybody know about hot corners? I figure Rick and Steve know it. On the computer, yeah, I haven't seen it up on the phone. 
It says, okay, Hot Corners allows you to lock your screen easily by moving your mouse to one of the bottom corners of the desktop. That's I a, guess so, I guess. That is a computer. But it does say this is all for iPhone. No. There is no mouse and there is no desktop on an iPhone. Well, it says the lock... Mac will immediately right. lock on lock to your login screen. Right. That's, all, Matt, that's on Mac. Okay. <laughs> on the phone, you push the sleep button and it locks instantly. Yeah, so did it say that? Oh, here it says how to set up hot corners on an iPhone. You go to settings, click accessibility, click touch, scroll down, and pick hot corners. Click on each corner individually and select an action for each one. So one example is restart. By setting one of your corners to the restart action, your phone will restart when you press that corner. I don't know if I'd want that one to happen all the time. <laughs> Accidentally touch that then corner. There's one and restarts. That's, you can do one to app switcher. Now here's another one called assistive touch. Um, this is for iPhone users who miss the home button. It says, but not everyone has moved on from touch ID and still some people like the home button. By using assistive touch, you can bring back a home button, which will flow down your screen and can be moved to whatever location you prefer, regardless of the model. Also helps and that's if your again home under, doesn't work. Right. So this is under settings, and then you check accessibility, click touch, and then click assistive touch. And a round button, like the home button, will appear. And then you can drag it to where you would like it and to use use it to bring up Notification center, custom, and whatever you want to do. Here's one for alerts on your iPhone. So in case somebody, um, instead of sound, like maybe they're partially deaf or whatever, you can have it flash instead of ring. So you go to settings again, accessibility, and then audio visual, and then turn on LED, which will flash for alerts. You have sound recognition on iPhone. Again, under accessibility, it's meant to alert the hearing impaired of noises like fire alarms, animals, baby crying, somebody's knocking at your door. It can be helpful for the people who wear headsets for gaming or music or movies. If you have a sleeping baby and don't want to wake them, but you want to catch up on a TV show, you can put your headphones on and let your phone keep an eye out and ear out for you. That one again is under accessibility, sound recognition, and then click sounds and choose what sounds you want to listen for. You can do location-based do not disturb with iPhone. Again, that's under control panel and you press and hold this, the D and D icon, and click until it says, until I leave this location. So when you leave that location, it will turn it off for you. Or you can say it to Siri and say, turn do not disturb on. Here's one that if you are meeting up with friends and you want to share your location and so they know where you are with another iPhone user, you do the you open the messages app and then type I'm at and then click your current location and it'll send your location. So basically you open the message right type I'm at, hit the space key and then click current location and then it sends where you are. And then the recipient will be redirected to their maps and navigate directly to you. Which is there's, interesting. There's also a notification feature in Maps that you can notify people of your progress, and then when you think you're going to arrive. Yeah. So it 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 keeps track of your progress and tells the people when you're going to arrive. So if you get laid, uh, if you get delayed, um, it gives, <laughs> get, yeah, I know. Um, if um. It sends an update to the person that uh, that you're running behind schedule. So, and that's that one's kind of interesting to get to is when you're in in a um, um, 
trip that you've got planned, if you swipe up um, um, or tap the little up arrow button, there's a share ETA. And so you can have people know when uh, when you're going to get back. Let me post that one, too. All right. Well, that's pretty much most of what I have. I'm looking to see where I got it from here. Let's see. Yeah, if you are you going to be able to like post some of those? Um, yes, I'm trying to. Been, uh, some of them sound pretty interesting. I've been, try to, some of them. I've been trying to post them into the public chat as um, yeah. as she's talking. This is called, this is called thirty amazing things you didn't know your iPhone could do, and the website is howchoo.com, h o w c h o o dot com. And it's from August of 2021. You know, there's no way to search by date. You have to know the full link. That's what it says. Howchow.com. By the woman, in Christina. The, so in the, in the public chat at the top of the column, there's uh, the three-dot menu. If you click on that, you can save the chat to your computer. Oh, I see. There was lots more. It just didn't scroll down for a while. Oh, yes. It's got a whole bunch of uh, things. And this is... Uh, I'm going to send it to you, Steve. You can post it. You don't need to send it to me. I created it. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. All right. So that, that was one of the sites where I went to find uh, her list. And then uh, I went to uh, AARP has a site where it says 19 smartphone tips and tricks. There was another site called Medium. Dot com and said 10 amazing things you didn't know your iPhone could do. So that's basically what I looked up and just picked um, things I thought were interesting. And plus, like I said, the AERP had the site where it's your tech under there where they had the uh, different times they do things that your phone can do too. So there's enough sites from what I was looking through to find all sorts of stuff that your iPhone could do. But I thought that the last one, the woman who had the 30 tricks, she had the most easily uh, understandable uh, how to do things with it all in one place. So that's my presentation, Steve, whatever. Like I said, I will uh, do type up a list of all these places for different, you know, all the different apps and stuff like that and and uh, how to do it because they're all short, you know, like here's where you can look for this, do this, do that, and it's just so it'll all be in one place. And Steve can post it on the CIDR, a CIDR link. Like down in our... Uh blog stuff on the site of your homepage? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I gotta I gotta get one of them iPhone things. <laughs> <laughs> but it did have uh, the AARP stuff always has Android listed too with their things, not just iPhone, because obviously between the both of us and but the other stuff was just strictly I the iPhone. I have an iPhone question. Um, when Apple comes out with a new iPhone, like the 15, which will be sometime later this year, do they at all drop the prices on like the 14? Basically, yeah. So if you if you go to the page now, um, oh, I can't hear you very well, Steve. I'm oh, sorry. Good. This is not muted. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you go to the iPhone website now, the 14 is the new one, but you can still get the 13 and the 12, and they have dropped in price as well. 
Um, one of the things we've been doing a lot for our customers, um, they discontinued the mini version. So there's no 14 mini. So a lot of our customers are still buying the 13 mini. Um, it's, it's a physically smaller phone um, with a bigger screen. So it's a 5.4 inch screen, but it's about the size of the old, uh, and, and in fact, still available iPhone SE, which is a 4.7 inch screen that still has a home button. Um, but the iPhone mini is the newer uh, model with the better cameras and, um, and, and this, the physically smaller phone, but still a bigger screen, but not quite as big as the 6.1 inch screen of the regular phone. So we had, um, we've had a lot of people like them by the, the 13 mini cause there's no 14 mini, but there's a 14 plus. So, so you can have a, you can have a big phone or you can have a bigger phone. And even if you know if you're moving up from a seven or an eight, you know even a twelve is a bigger is 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 a big jump, and I think the twelve start at at um, four ninety nine is it, three ninety nine maybe, no the 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 SE is um, four twenty nine, and so the twelve starts at five ninety nine. There is let me uh, let me find it and I'll. Um, post it. Uh, let me go back to here. Share my screen, and I want this one. Um, there is a. Um, um, what's the word I want? Compare a compare button. So you can put in uh, the the phone you have now. To say I uh, I recently had an eight, and then you can look at you know say the twelve, or the thirteen, and see what the differences are. Sometimes it comes down to color, so the twelve has a purple version, but the thirteen doesn't. But the thirteen has a blue version. Is that the same? Yeah. So the twelve has a darker blue. The thirteen has a lighter blue. So that's uh, uh, annoying for some people. So you can uh, you can see what the upgrade would be for your phone to go up to um, say the SE or even say a 13 mini. So here you can, you can see the, the mini is actually physically smaller than than the SE and the 8, the, the, the classic iPhone size, um, but it's got the bigger screen with the face ID. So it's actually um, 5.4 inch so you get a bigger screen. And it uh, it has the two cameras, and has the A15 processor. Um, so the the 13 still has the A A15. Um, let me think. If we go to the 12, yeah, the 12 is only a 14. But it'd be faster than than the older phones anyway, so it may not matter if you get the 14 or 15. So, and then of course, if you go all the way up to the Pro Max. It's got the 16. So the 15, the iPhone 15 will probably have a 17 in it. Woohoo. <laughs> I guess that was a long answer to your question, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, but it was helpful. Thank you. I, why did I think that they had discontinued the SE models? Um... Because they don't they don't advertise them very much. They always advertise yeah. the, the biggest and best. They want you to buy the more expensive one, and then they come up with something for the rest of us. Yeah. So there's still people <laughs> yeah. that like the physical smaller size. We had one woman that that she was going to spend five hundred dollars fixing her eight because the front glass was broken, the back glass was broken, it needed a battery, and we talked her into spending well six hundred dollars <laughs> for a thirteen mini, um, but. She, she was initially insistent on fixing her eight because she didn't want face ID. Um, well, you don't have to turn mm -hmm. on face ID when you get a, a phone that has it, and it will still just use your passcode. So if you don't like it reading your face, you just don't turn it on. Same thing with touch ID. If you don't want to use touch ID, uh, turn, don't turn it on. They can use the, still use the passcode. In fact, some people who have very dry skin will have trouble using the uh, the touch ID. Um, oftentimes because they, they put lotion on for their dry skin and then the lotion blocks their, the fingerprint reader from seeing it. 
I notice in my car if I'm wearing my sunglasses, the face ID doesn't work. So if I'm, you know, trying to ask Siri for new directions or send a message, I got to take my um, um, sunglasses off temporarily so it can unlock the phone. Did you say at one point that Mac Ave does not sell iPhones? We don't stock iPhones because there's literally hundreds of combinations. Okay, so they're a special order thing. Yeah, we buy them as needed. Okay. One of the sneaky right. things now, um, um, most of the phones, okay. they show the lowest possible price with the carrier discounts. So right now, uh, Verizon is giving discounts, a $30 discount um, for uh, activation discount on phones. Um, and so if you look at Apple's website, you know, it'll say, the, you know, the, the phone is, um, you know, 749 with a new Verizon contract. <laughs> Otherwise, it's 779 So you have to watch that little asterisk. But usually the best thing, in fact, what we typically, you know, do is, um, let me just uh, uh, do this myself. We'll, um, we'll go to the, um, with the customer, we'll go to the uh, iPhone website and say you're looking for, you know, you want a 13 because you don't need the super latest. Go for the mini because you like the small one. Uh, and then you can pick the color. Let's do blue because that's different. Pick your storage. And we'll keep going down. You're going to trade in your old one. So <laughs> you got an old beat up seven or eight. Let me see. Um, they'll give you 40 bucks. No, up to 70 bucks on a, on a seven. Um, after they get your phone and decide if it, it actually meets that criteria. They might um, trade. So here, so it's 529 after trade and rebate. Or 599 due today. Asterisk asterisk. Let's go see what those asterisks is, is, is mean. Way down at the bottom of the page. Oh geez. One, two, three, four, five. Diamond delta dot double delta square. Double diamond. There we go. Price includes a thirty thousand thirty dollar Verizon discount. So if you're not starting a new Verizon phone, then it's going to be $30 more. In fact, you can sometimes say that. I'm going to go back up here and edit this and say no trade-in. And I am going to buy it outright. And now you can see the asterisks. So Verizon has a $30 discount. The other carriers don't. So you, if you buy it unlocked to use your existing plan, then it shows you the real price. While you're there, Steve, are those the only carriers that uh, iPhones can go with? No. Uh, these are the only ones that have deals with Apple. Okay. So then you get a car you get an unlocked. In fact, it used to say unlocked. I guess people didn't know what that meant anymore. So you can connect it to any carrier. So then right. you would basically, typically you'd move the SIM card from your current phone into the new phone or get a new SIM card from the carrier th that you already mm -hmm. have. Um, because the newer phones, the 12 and later, are uh, 5G capable, if you don't have a 5G SIM card, you probably have to get a new SIM card from your carrier to, to support 5G. Do they all use physical SIM cards, or are they eSIM now? Well, now, the, f the good question, the 14... Um, well, the, the 12 and 13 can use a physical SIM or an eSIM. The 14 is eSIM only. Um, and some of the carriers, let's just max it out just to see. So I don't want 14, I want 14 Pro. So phone, 14 Pro. It's fun maxing things out for stuff you're never going to buy. So the Pro Max, so already we're at $1,000. Uh, let's do deep purple, smoke on the water, one terabyte of storage on your phone. And there's rumors that the 15 is going to have a two terabyte option. Uh, no trade in. We're going to buy it outright and unlocked for any carrier. Um, in many cases, 
the carriers app so the Verizon app the T-Mobile app etc will let you move your physical sim into an eSIM um, we've had a couple of customers where we have to call the carrier and do it then do it over the phone to move the sim into an eSIM question about eSIMs how hackable are they uh, theoretically they're not let's see well Anything is hackable with the right tools. Okay. All right. The big thing with, with SIM, what's, what's been called SIM jacking, is every SIM has a unique um, code number on it, the IMEI. And if someone else gets your IMEI, they receive all of your calls and text messages. Um, so there, that's been something called SIM jacking. So eSIM is supposed to make it harder for that to happen. Uh, let's see. So that headline has almost nothing to do. Can your eSIM be hacked? And similar questions. So all these answers have nothing to do with the question. I hate when, when they do that. How about this one, which is more secure? One of the biggest ways we've seen of, of SIM jacking is the bad guy calls up a carrier. Well, you have to be a target. So a bad guy calls up the carrier. Hi, my name is Joe. You know, I lost my uh, uh, phone. I got a new phone. Can you send me a SIM card? And they convince the company to send them a SIM card, and now... The bad guy is getting all of your phone calls and messages. Because they use your name when they ask for the new SIM card? Right. So it usually takes several different pieces of information. So what the, what the phone uh, uh, tech support people are supposed to do is verify your identity. Typically the billing address, uh, your secret questions or something, or a PIN, something like that. Um, but if your if your secret questions are too weak, then through what's called social engineering, the bad guys can convince the customer service agent that they are this person and and access their data. The one of the big cases of that was Sarah Palin back during uh, the election she was running in. Her um, security question on I think it was her Twitter account was where did where did she meet her husband? And that was public knowledge because she's a public figure. So someone was able to get into her account and start sending out nasty messages. We had a member years ago when we were still meeting at East High in the forum room who suggested, and it's a, a, very, it's a great idea, when you deal with security questions, pick an answer that has actually nothing at all to do with the security question because they don't care what the hell answer you put in. Right. So if you use you know, a password, not anything anybody can look up or guess or yep. anything else. If you use a password manager, you can fill in a I random used password. I do that. But then you have to remember what you you I lied used, as. Right, so what was be. what was your first That's car? And then you say red instead of Ford. So that that's. You say frosting. <laughs> Yeah, but you don't. So when, now when someone asks you what your first car was and you say, you know, a red Ford, you don't remember what your fake answer was. We, we, we've kind of wandered into some more Q&A here. Yeah. So I wonder if put it into your kitchen. I, I, finally, uh, I finally upgraded my OS to uh, Ventura um, because it supposedly had... Um, captioning capability built into it that didn't require that the source you were trying to do it with offered closed captioning. Mm -hmm. um, any idea of where I go in settings to find that feature? Um, it's called live captioning, so that may help to find it. Okay. System settings, accessibility, and live captions. Okay. Thank you. Let me just search for that. Is it in here? Live captions. Yes. Your Mac for will that. use on-device intelligence to automatically display captions across all apps. Accuracy of captions may be varied and should not be relied yeah. upon. 
<laughs> you can't anyway. Yeah. Hey, where's Bob Hoey tonight? He was here for a while. I don't know. Is there some game on tonight? Yeah, he's probably upset that the uh, women's uh, team got yeah. uh, eliminated from the World Cup. Is that still going on? Or did they... the, the Cup is going on still, yes, but um, yeah. the uh, U.S. team was eliminated. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But, uh, yeah. Well, we can't win them all, can we? <laughs> So quarterfinals, oh. you got to root for Spain, Japan, Australia, or England. So you've had you had you have to win sixty-one games in order to get to the final winner. Wow. No, I'm sorry, I wrong. That's a lot. Sixty-five games. <laughs> Get, you have to be pretty good to, to, to win that finals. many games. Yeah. Well, and sometimes the scores are one zero. There's not a lot of yeah. there's not a lot of scoring sometimes in uh, in uh, in soccer, but it's really exciting to go back and forth and back and forth. What we were in, so we ended up with uh, five points in Group E. So we lost to lost to Sweden. So a zero zero. So that was a tie, but somehow we had a lower record, and so we didn't advance. <laughs> so you play for three hours and have a zero zero tie. Yay! All righty. Any uh, any other questions or? Uh, News or anything well, before we call it a night? I'm good. I think we're tired. Can you hear me? It's time. Yep, we can hear you. I said something earlier and no one heard me. <laughs> I heard Hi. you, Kim. I'm too tired to have questions. Anybody know a place I can move? I'll have to move by September 15th. Anyone knows a place to rent? Not offhand. Did you try apartments.com? No. All right, you want to close this out, Shirley? Somewhere without a second. <laughs> All right, well, I guess this ends our August meeting. And it's 9.29, so I guess we're going to end on a good time, 9.30. So next week is our board meeting on Wednesday. Um, Charlie, I am not going to be able to be there. If you could take over and run the board meeting for me. Sure. You do that. Sure. Because I'm going out where there is no internet. Well, I can't right. can't go online. Have a peaceful evening. <laughs> yes. She's yeah. She's, so, she's going to Attica. I'm not going to Attica. I'm going to my friend who lives near Arcade in Wyoming County, which is near Attica. <laughs> no, it's quite a ways from Attica. But she lives in the country, and she refuses to get internet connection. A wife, uh, because she refuses that she does not want to have one. She has cable, but <clears throat> she just doesn't have it internet yet. Took her Been forever to working get cable, on her though. for well, but we told her she could, you know, very easily get Wi Fi added and been working on her for a while and it might wear her down enough where she would get it. Because when my other friend and I come over, we're both like, my friend has her, her, um, uh, provider lets her go on online and mine I can't my my phone is always looking 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 and it drains the battery in no time and all my data disappears within I did that once accidentally didn't realize it and then had just renewed my data and the next day it was all gone turn off roaming 
So I did not realize that, that it was roaming, roaming, looking, looking, and couldn't find it. So when I go visit her, it's... You got to um, no internet. find some streaming TV shows she'd really like, so she has to get the internet to stream it. Well, I, <laughs> you know, they brought it up a lot of times to her, and I said, you know, it's not going to be that expensive or anything, but she's just very old-fashioned, and she doesn't want to have technology. She doesn't have a phone, an iPhone, or anything like that. She just doesn't. So if she wants to look up something on the internet, she calls me, and I look it up for her. I said, you know, maybe that's the problem. The, you shouldn't do you that. Do You're enabling it. her. But <laughs> she doesn't want to go to the point of actually adding it or get a phone. She just doesn't want to do that. So I'm like, well, I don't know. She gets along pretty good because she's got her family, helps her out. I help her out. You know, she gets by with a little bit that she wants to look up. So, so far, there's nothing urgent enough that she wants to say, oh, yeah, I need to get this. She might at some point, like I said, but right now it's a no go. <laughs> All right, so. folks. Well, it's been wonderful. I'm going to say good night. Okay. Yep. Right, yeah. I'm going to say good night too. Good night, See you. Good night, Charlie. We're all signing off. All right. And, and what's our topic yeah. next time? Do we know. Or what? Be careful. You know, they did that on the British soap opera I watched, you know, where the old guy didn't want the phone and he finally got one because he felt bad because his niece almost died trying to get him a message. And, and so he gets the phone and then he got addicted and he wouldn't put it down and, <laughs> and then they couldn't get him off. Well, our September general like, meeting is, is supposed to be about new iPhones that supposedly might be out by that time. Okay. Tentative topic at the moment. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Happy travels. <laughs> yes.